So here's the clip we're gonna be using. I just have a hard cut, which is what we need. And so I, the way I structured this is I cut this clip exactly where I wanted the transition to start. So I know I'm gonna start it right in the beginning of this clip, however you guys want it. I usually like the way this transition looks it, with it being longer than usual, as in kind of like, you know, a second or two. Um, so, but if you want it faster, you can definitely make it faster. So let's get into it. First thing you wanna do is I'm just gonna move, go ahead and move this bottom clip up just because it's easier to work with. Now I'm going to press Control D with this top clip selected, which is the second clip. That'll duplicate it. With the cursor being on the first frame, I'm just gonna go ahead and right click, time, and freeze frame. What this will do is freeze frame to the first frame. And now what I wanna do is I wanna start masking out my subject. So with the top clip selected, I'm gonna go up here to this pen tool and I'm gonna go ahead and mask them out. You're gonna to wanna to mask them out cleanly and nicely because since this effect is long, it's gonna take longer for, you know, um, people have more time to notice if your mask is ugly and whenever your mask is ugly, it just kind of takes away from the video. So make sure it's clean and nice and then just go ahead and take your time on it. I'm probably gonna speed this up, so. So once you finish your mask, you're gonna have like this clone effect. And all we need to do is fix that is, this is kind of the opposite of what we want. We just want to click on the layer with the, with the mask, press M on our keyboard, and this will bring up the mask properties to the left right here. And you can either click inverted or subtract. They do different things for different things, but for this purpose, they work the same. So after clicking subtract, you can see I have the top layer with him masked out, and then you can see the bottom layer playing at the same time. Now I'm gonna to wanna to drag this top layer all the way to the left since that's where my transition is going to start. And right when it cuts to the second clip, I'm gonna cut the XX off by moving, dragging it to the left. So you can see the bottom clip plays through him and, and then it goes into the transition like this. The mat, this mask is kind of rough, so I'm gonna add a feather to it. Under the mask properties, I'm just gonna go ahead and open this. On mask feather, I'm gonna add a five, just so it still looks you know, relatively nice. Now, once you made your mask, you can start with the transition work. First thing is you wanna make a camera, so go to an empty space right here, click right, or right click, sorry, new camera, you can change the settings to these and you can match your camera settings, but most of the time it really doesn't matter. So after clicking OK, I'm gonna have this new camera here. How I like to work, I kind of work backwards with, with this transition because I think it's just easier and less, you can mess up less. So I go to the end of the transition, pretty much the first frame of the next clip, and I open up these camera transform properties and I just keyframe all of them and then I move my cursor back to the front. The reason why I do this is because I can move the camera any way I want to, and even if I mess it up somehow, um, I know the camera will forever be at the end. So let me give you an example. I'm going to now select my layer with the clip or with the mask, and then change it into a 3D layer. If you don't have these settings, you can click toggle switches and modes, and then right here on this underneath this cube, go ahead and click that, and then it'll turn to a 3D layer. Like like I said before, I switched all of these uh settings out so if you look back and I change this back to zero you can see whichever way I change the camera it'll always revert revert back to the original position that's why I like to do it this way anyways let's start with the transition so so now we need to duplicate this clip to make it give it that tunnel effect so all you need to do is select the layer with the mask on it press ctrl d and that will duplicate it now with either layer selected all you have to do is move your cursor to the z Right here where it says Z and go ahead and drag it forward or backward go ahead and drag it backward but go ahead and drag it backward till it gives you can see the second clip behind it so if you look at it you can also by selecting it and pressing P on your keyboard it'll bring up the position properties and you can move the position just like this as well so now it gives that little tunnel effect now I'm gonna give you some 3d game and after effects here this is kind of hard to work with but what you can do is if you go to this bottom right right here where it says one view and you change that to two views, this will automatically bring up a second view. And right here where it says top, you can it might be default, but if you change that to top, now you're looking at your scene from a top view and you can see the cameras right here and you have your clips right here. So now if I select these two clips, so by selecting the first one and then holding control and selecting the second one, 
Now these two clips are highlighted right here and I can move them both. So knowing that is with these both of these clips selected, I'm gonna press Control D and that will duplicate both of the clips. Now, since both of these new clips are highlighted, I can go to any of these Z passes right here and I can move them back like this. And if you look at the right screen, you can see it's making that tunnel effect way easier. I moved them a little bit too far back, but if I move them, I think a little bit forward like this, it's starting to give that tunnel effect. And so now what I like to do is now I like to drag and highlight all of these, then press Control D, and then it'll duplicate all of all of the clips I selected, and then go ahead and do the same thing and move it back. And now I have pretty much have a tunnel effect without messing up any of these settings. So if you look, we have this tunnel effect, and that's pretty much almost ready for the transition. Now to finish the tunnel effect, what I like to do is go to the camera, open up the position properties, and I like to go ahead and just start zooming in. What else you can do is you can move the camera with like this, the same way you move the other ones through the Z depth. And you can see right here, this usually works better than just moving the position and you get like weird glitchiness. So if we look at it now, we'll have the infinite transition into this. This kind of, I need this transition to finish. So I have the finished clone slide up into place instead of it just popping out. So I'm gonna move this keyframe up three frames. And then so you can see the, the camera move finishes and then it transitions. So now I'm gonna finish the transition itself by cleaning it up by having the a cutout of him this time not inverted slide up right when the camera finishes. So how we do that is we, we just go ahead right here. I'm gonna move this to one view so you guys can see it again. We we'll go ahead and move our cursor and go ahead and click on it and you can see it automatically selects the top clip because that's the one closest to us that's kind of it kind of suggests that we want to select that one so by selecting top clip you can see it's down here i'm going to duplicate this clip now by pressing ctrl d now i'm going to press m while this one is still selected and instead of subtract i'm going to click add and then now i'm going to press p again and I'm just gonna move this backwards by one. So I'm gonna move this backwards by one. And technically, now this layer is beneath this top layer, um, this top layer over him, if that makes sense. So the reason we did this is because if I select this, this layer now that has him and not the background, if I move the Y, you can see it's behind this layer and you can may easily make a, make an animation of him sliding up to finish the transition. So if we go through our clip, you can kind of see we're past the front layer kind of right here, so we can kind of begin our transition. So I'm gonna begin the transition right here when you start sliding up, since we are technically past all of the layers. So with this clip selected, you can see this is the one where he moves. I'm gonna go ahead and the position, make a keyframe right there. I'm going to slide this all the way down. And then at the end of the clip, I'm going to slide this up. It was 960 by 540, so I'm just going to change this back to 540. And now if you take a look at it, he slides up to give it a cleaner finishing look to the transition. Like this. Now to give it some extra sauce, we're going to add motion blur to all of it. So by doing those, all of these 3D you can see right here all of these 3D layers. You're going to want to go ahead and add motion blur to all of them. And what that will do is give it a cleaner look to look more finished and smooth. So I'm going to save it. Now we're going to add a little bit more sauce to him where I'm going to have clones flying through these layers just to give it that extra sauce. So what I like to do is I like to select this clone now which is the topmost clone we made come up, which should be, let's see if I can find it. It should be this one, yep. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one. I'm gonna press P on the keyboard. And then now I'm gonna go back to the two views so we can see what, what's going on. So this is the layer I just selected. And now I'm going to go ahead and move this layer in between, you know, um, 
layers that I kind of want the transition to happen or like I, would, I want the little effect to happen. I'm going to move the position up because I want him to flip, fly across the screen and I'm going to move him to the left. So I'm going to move a couple frames back. This might not make sense. I might be going too fast for some of you. But if once I do it, you're going to kind of get the gist of it and I can explain on the next one. So if you look at it, here, let me move this bottom layer. If we look at it, we'll have him sliding across the screen. And this is just some extra things I see a lot of people do just to give it that extra extra style to the transition. So we're going to recreate it with another one um, earlier. So pretty much right about here. So I'm going to select the one we just made. Press Control D. I'm going to move it backwards. And you can kind of see in this screen, he is kind of where we we want the um, him to fly across the screen. So I'm just going to leave that one right there. I'm going to press P so I can see my keyframes on this layer. I'm going to delete this one. And then I kind of want this animation to, I want him to finish flying across the screen pretty much like right here. So now I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to move this X over here to the right because I want him to fly to the right. Just like that. And then I'm going to delete this last keyframe just because we du duplicated it all the way from the back one. So if you look at the animation now, let me change this one view. Take a look at it. It'll start zooming out. And he should have. There he is. He's flying across the screen. It's a little too fast. So I'm going to elongate this. And the motion blur kind of makes it invisible. There he is. He just flew across the screen. And there should be another one right about here. And then he should fly, or he should transition up now, just like this to finish it. And that's basically it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Peace out later.